I'm Rick Johansson, and this is Iron Echo Design. In today's Inkscape tutorial, we're gonna make 3D isometric text just like this. It's coming from a comment from Davey Edgar. Glad I found your videos. Can you do a tutorial on how to combine 3D text with perspective? And I replied and he actually gave an example. He wants it to look kind of like this. We did this previously in a different tutorial using interpolation. Today, we're gonna do a different method called motion. It gives you a little bit more control and it lets you actually fine tune the gradients. Now, this is an example of something kind of like long division where it's good to know how you do it, but there are 3D rendering software that can do this automatically. Illustrator, I know the latest version does it with an automated feature. You can still do it in Inkscape. It's fun. It's easy. So let's begin. We can start by getting our page set up so we're all working at the same scale. You can go to File, Document Properties, and you'll see the format A4 is what I have here. X out of that. I did bring in a color palette because I want to cheat and go quicker. If you want these exact colors, you can either screenshot it or I'll have the color codes in the description below. Let's grab the text tool and we'll write 3D. I'm using Enter, which is an open source Google font. If you don't have Enter, you could use something like Arial. I'll change my style to heavy. And no matter which method you're gonna choose, you have to first make this text into a path. So you have it selected, we'll go to path, object to path. Right now, if you look down here at the bottom, this is your info area. It's saying group of two objects. We have to ungroup it, object, ungroup. And now we can take these two parts and create a path, path, combine. Now that it's a path, we can either do path effects or we can do the interpolate or motion. Let's start by doing interpolate like in the previous 3D text video so you can see how it compares to the new motion method that we'll do. I'm going to play with the colors. We'll go to object, fill and stroke. I'm on the fill tab and right now it's black. I'll do eyedropper and we'll make it this pink. Control D will duplicate it. I'll take this one and put it aside. I'll change it now to this darker pink. Control D again will duplicate it and we'll pull this aside and make it darker. This maroon. These right here, this is hierarchy. I want to have the maroon one at the bottom. Click lower selection to the bottom. And now you can already visualize the 3D effect that we're going to create with interpolate. And in the previous tutorial, we actually made it smaller as well to create even more of a stretch. The color change will go from what you first select to what you second select. So we want to go from the back, hold shift, get the front, extensions, generate from path, interpolate. For today, just stay on exponent one. The steps, that means how many iterations of this path do you want between the back and the front? We'll start with 60. For the method, have it on discard extra nodes of the longer path. And when you select interpolate style, that's gonna create the shading. It's gonna go from this darker to this lighter pink, whatever it is. So let's do that. And if you put that lighter color on top, you've created your 3D text. That's basically the whole first video we did on this with interpolate. It's a fine way, it's easy, but it's not what Davey Edgar was asking. He wants to do it in perspective and he wants it to look like this. Let's start fresh. I'll do 3D again. We'll change it to heavy. It's not gonna work unless we turn it into a path. So path, object to path, ungroup it. They're both selected. Now we can go to path, combine. And we can change to this pink here. I want to look at his reference picture one more time. He wants the perspective to be angled this way and pulling the depth out that way. Since it is a path, we can have it selected and go to path, path effects. It'll look blank. Hit the plus and you get the path effects menu. You want to find the one that says perspective right here, perspective envelope. The sidebar menu is going to pop up and the first one type perspective that's what we want but we want overflow perspective still nothing happens so you want to go to this icon right here it's edit paths by node now you'll see these diamonds in the corners here i'm going to draw this node upwards and the bottom one upwards maybe i'll make it a little bit more dramatic and that's it for perspective Instead of doing interpolate to draw out the depth we're going to go with motion go back to extensions Generate from path, there's interpolate. Next one down is motion. The pop-up menu you get, you'll have a couple of choices, length and angle. I did cheat. The angle negative 160 is going to draw it back this direction. So for speed, just start with that. You can play around with the different angles and see how it looks. And for length, I'll just stick with 10. We'll do live preview, apply. And there it is. It's hard to see when it's all bunched together. I'll take away the top. I'm actually gonna use this part twice. One will be the proper face of a 3D design when we're done, and the other will be a lighting overlay. If you find this method easier than the interpolate, you actually could select all of this part, make it darker, 
and put your face on it. You'll still see these lines though. The way you get rid of that is to select one of them, then hold shift, grab everything, path, union. Now it's all nice and clean. You could put the front back on it, but we wanna go one step further. We wanna actually have control of the shading. So I'm gonna take this off, control Z, so I have everything the way it was, and I'm gonna eliminate anything that's not seen beneath the face. To help visualize it, I'm going to cut the opacity on the front. So I know I wanna take all of this out. It's as simple as selecting while holding shift and deleting that. Here's a trick you may not have used before. I've got the 3D, this pink 3D selected. I can hold Alt while clicking the mouse and grab layers beneath that top selection. Now I have this part, delete. That finishes the D, now let's clean up the three. You technically can leave the stuff behind there. It's just easier for me to visualize when I wanna do the gradients to have it in set pieces. So just humor me, I'm gonna delete a couple more parts. And now we prepare for the gradients. To meld all these sections together, I'm gonna to hold shift, create a bounding box, select everything, go to path, union. Now it's all one path, I can add a gradient to it. This one, hold shift, get that, path, union. This one's independent, I'll do alt, Red line this, path union. Let's make this full opacity, put it back here. These remaining lines don't bother me because when the gradients are applied, the contrast and color is gonna hit there anyway. Let me take one more look at the reference photo. This was definitely or probably made with 3D software, but it looks like there are light sources coming from here, pushing the shadows that way. So I'm gonna go and make a sun to help visualize what we're doing here. I may use some artistic license, so go easy on me if my physics aren't right. We'll start with the top. This section right here, the way you apply a gradient, make sure you're on the fill tab on fill and stroke and go to linear gradient. The default will take you from the base color to full transparency, so we don't want that. I'll click over to the other side. This arrow on the slider correlates with this part. This bar down here changes the alpha and you can make that full opacity. And we'll do eyedropper to bring it to this color. See how that looks better already? You can slide these around to change the gradient. You can also actually hit this over here, create and edit gradients. If I have it selected, you can change the direction of the gradient as well. If the sun was shooting up here for some reason, you could bring your shadows out that way. You can play with it. Go back to selector tool, choose the next gradient area on the fill tab, linear gradient, fix the transparency. And under here, I would imagine maybe it would be lighter on the inside. So this side will go lighter. In the comments in a different video, someone said I, I miss having the actual gradient bar and I thought the exact same thing the first time I used Inkscape 1.2. You see this new slider and you think that it's been replaced, but it's still there. You just have to click the tool like I showed you. You can also choose, like let's say this one here, rather than rework it every time, you can go to gradient, hit this delta and choose the one that you liked. A word of caution though, if you do cheat like this and take a gradient you already made, if you make changes on this, it's gonna affect the other one as well. So I am gonna cheat on this one, but we'll start fresh for over here. I imagine I was time-lapsing some of that. If this part right here, one more trick, you can also hit this left, right arrow. That will reverse the gradient. You can see if you like it better with the dark to the light or light to the dark. Goodbye, sun. I wanna add the overlay here. I've got the original that we had. I'm gonna choose radial gradient. I want the light part to be in the center. So I'll do reverse but that's actually just transparent. We don't want that. I want it to be full opacity, but white, something like that. And one more trick before I lay it on top, I don't want it to be blend mode normal. I'm gonna go down to overlay. It's a subtle difference. I like the way it behaves as an overlay, not just a second layer. And if you really wanna fine tune it, if you choose your edit the gradient, you can move which way the shine hits. I'll leave it right there. Group everything together and let's throw this on a backdrop there's your 3d isometric text the long division way if you have a suggestion for a video you want to see let me know in the comments i appreciate it if you're brand new to inkscape and this was all too fast i do have a quick start beginner guide i'll have it up here somewhere 45 minutes free course walks you through all the menus toolbars everything and i will see you next time